Hey guys, what is up? So those of you who watch our channel, you guys know how many times I emphasize over and over again how important it is to have a water softener that softens your water, all of your water, before it goes into the RV and into your fresh water tank. A water softener helps reduce the mineral deposits that comes from hard water. Well, our RV on the go water softener needs new resin beads. And today, I'm going to show you how we're going to change those out. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. I want to give you a little context here on how I determined uh, that we needed to replace our resin beads in our water softener. So the other day I went to the kitchen sink like I always do. I took a cup and I opened up the uh, kitchen faucet, filled it up with some water, and I took a test with my hardness strips. And I immediately saw that it was about in this range, this three to seven range here. So I knew that I needed to do a regular regeneration with two salt containers. So I did, and I still was getting a hard reading. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, about doing a salt regeneration, I've already done a video on that, and I'm gonna put a link in the description text that shows you all how to do that. I mean, it's really easy to do, but I'll also put a link at the very end of the video where you can click that and watch that video on how I do this. So after I did the normal two salt container regeneration and retested and it still came up hard, I thought, okay, I need to go ahead and do four. That's what you do. You do four of these babies, pour them in the softener, and let them sit for an hour. After that, you do not need to do any back flushing or anything like that. Just hook up your water and do a slow rinse like you normally would for 25 minutes and then do a fast flush for about five minutes. So that's what I did. And I retested the water again with my test strips. And guess what? It still came up a hard reading again. So that verified to me that my beads were shot. They had lasted the life, the time that they were meant to be. They have served us well for the last few years, but now I need to get rid of the old resin beads and put in new. And that's what we're gonna cover today. Here are the new beads right here. You see that? They're, they're small, golden or yellow type spherical. They're circular type of beads. They're very, very small. Usually a water softener will last anywhere from four to seven years. It just depends on how hard the water is where you live or where you're staying, how much water you use, and how often you regenerate your water softener. Now you cannot regenerate too often. Uh, normally for me, every couple of three weeks, I'll take one of these test strips, I'll draw some water and I'll test it and I'll look. As soon as it starts to get hard or I see the water hardness is getting harder, I'll do a regeneration. But if you have a washer or a dishwasher or any of those type of things where you're using a lot of water and you need to regenerate every month, you can do that. I wanna emphasize this. You cannot over regenerate your water softener using salt. If you wanna do it every couple of weeks or every month, you can do that. But for us, since we do not have a, a washer or a dishwasher or something that uses a lot of water, Joni and I don't use that much water. Usually I'll regenerate every couple of months, maybe three at the most. So let's get started replacing the new resin beads. What I've set up here is I've got our regular table here and I'm gonna pick up and put our softener up here. You see that? I want you to come up here and look at this real quick. I wanted to show you something here. Normally when you get these new, they have a rope handle here, right? And that rope handle lasted us about a year, year and a half and it broke right in here. So I went to Home Depot and I bought some plastic uh, coated cable and a couple of clamps, put a piece of tubing around here and I made my own handle. And you can just tell by the looks of these clamps, uh, we've been using this a long time. Let's get on with replacing the beads. Here I have my quick disconnects. And of course you know about the top. If you unscrew this top right here, this is where you normally pour your salt 
to regenerate your softener, remember? I mean, you guys have done this. But to replace the beads, you have to remove this lower collar right here. This whole top will come off. Now this on-the-go water softener is a very common product in the RV industry. Uh, but whether you have this exact model or not, the process is the same. So in order to replace the beads, you have to remove this lower collar. Now I know some of you may have arthritis or you don't have the grip that you used to have and maybe getting this top off will be a little hard for you. Now what you can do in the beginning is just try to take and try to untwist this thing, okay? Now I'm a pretty strong guy, so I'm just gonna try this just to see how, I've never had this off yet, let's just see how tight this is on. So I'm gonna grab a hold of here and hold here and twist and look at that. That begins to twist off just like that. But let's say that you're not strong. And like I said, you have arthritis or you don't have the grip or maybe you have a bad shoulder or whatever. Remember when I just finished my three-part series on uh, generator maintenance and I showed you guys these Tecton uh, pliers, okay? These pliers is what I use to remove the oil filter in the generator. And not only that, but Joni uses these when she changes the oil on the motorhome. So you can take these same pliers and put them right around the base here. Do you see that? You just put them around, you see those jaws? You don't need to get on it really tight because this is plastic, okay? You wanna be careful, but you can just get a hold of that and give it a little nudge and just break it loose. Using these pliers will help you break that loose if you've got a problem in taking a grip of this uh, top of the water softener. Okay, so we've got this loose. We're gonna go ahead now and unscrew this. And watch as I pull this out. You see that tube right there? We're just gonna lift this whole assembly out and there's a screen at the bottom. You see that? And there, here are some of my old beads right here. We're gonna go ahead and just set this down off to the side for now. Now, like I said earlier, I know some of you and including myself, I mean, you know, we're not as strong as we used to be. So if you ever need any help, uh, moving one of these up on a table and draining this out like I'm going to show you in a minute. Do not be afraid to ask a fellow RVer next door to you to give you a hand. I mean, RVers are some of the most helpful, nicest people around that, that we've ever met. I mean, I've helped a lot of people do different things over the, over the last few years. So if this is something a little bit too heavy for you, don't be afraid to ask. Just ask for some help. So here's what we're going to do. We have the top removed here. And what we're going to do, I put a towel right here on the edge of the table. And I'm going to put, I got my bucket. You see my bucket? I put this on a little stand here. And what we're going to do, you see how I'm grabbing this here? I got it on the bottom and I got my fingers up in here. And I'm just going to tip it over. And now that resin is starting to get out. It's starting to come out. I'm going to move that in just a little bit. And now I'm going to tip it over even more. And you see that resin coming out of there? Look at that rust color. You see that? Before I go any further, look at the color of the new beads. See how nice and clean and golden uh, those beads are? Remember that song? Golden beads. Ah, 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 gold. Oh, never mind. Anyway, but look at that that's coming out. It's kind of a rusty color, dark brown color. Okay, they've done their job. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm putting this towel on the edge of the table so that this does not slip. You see that? And then I'm gonna take my hose with my nozzle and I'm gonna come in here and I am going to rinse this out. You see that? And we're gonna continue rinsing this old softener out until all those beads and all of that nonsense is out of there. Okay. Boy, when this thing is empty, <laughs> it's light. Look at that. We have rinsed out and totally emptied all the old resin beads out of here. But we still have this, remember? We have this tube and the screen down here at the bottom. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna clean all this off too. So we've done all of our rinsing of the old uh, water softener container and we've also done the valve and the screen and all that. But I wanna show you something here. Here are the new beads. Let's reach down in here. 
Look at the old beads. You see the difference? These beads right here are about four years old, maybe a little more. But you can see their life is spent, okay? They've done their job. So now we're going to fill the softener with new beads. So there's a couple of ways you can put these new beads in here. I'm going to use one of Joni's favorite wine glasses. Here's my scoop. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. But I could come in here and put my hand here and put in a cup and put in a cup and so on and so on. But I thought, you know what? There's got to be a better way, right? So I went dumpster diving again and I got an old milk carton and I cut just around the top to remove that little uh, cap that goes on here. And then I cut off the bottom. And I can just hold it with the handle, put that right on there, and I could just throw in the beads this way. I ran across this uh, gain laundry detergent container, and I saw that rim right there, and I thought, wow, that looks like the perfect size. So I cut off that little spout that's on the end of here. I cut off the bottom of it here. I still have a handle, and that thing actually, look at that. That thing actually goes right on there. I was like, okay, that's cool. So you can see that big old spout there that fits right on top of here. And this is a great funnel. So let's go ahead and give this a try. We're just going to put in a cup there. And while I'm doing this, don't forget, right up here, I have a playlist of tons of videos that show you how to fix different things and upgrades and maintenance items. I mean, come on, we do not have to go to the School of Hard Knocks. I show you guys how to do all this stuff and because you can do this. So anyway, make sure you check that playlist out and I'm going to continue filling this up with golden beads. So I'm getting right down here to the end and I thought I'd try this milk jug and see how this works as a funnel. I actually like it. Uh, the hole at the bottom is a little smaller, but I can just shake that in like that. And because this plastic is smooth, it actually goes in there pretty good. So either one will work fine. Okay, so we got the new beads in. I just wanted to mention here that this softener that we have, like I said earlier, it's a very common size uh, for RVers. Uh, it is a double standard water softener. It takes about 24 pounds of beads, okay? I want you to look inside here and you'll be able to see. Can you see how high those beads are right there? They actually come up to right about here, okay? So from the bottom to the top to here, you don't want to fill them all the way up. But to right about in here, you could fill it maybe a little bit more. But these double standard on the go water softeners take about 24 pounds of beads. And that's what we just put in there. Now, one other thing I want to show you, you see these beads as I was pouring them in using the funnel, you see how those beads got in the threads of this uh, softener. We want to make sure that we rinse those beads out so that when we put this back in, it won't gall the threads. So we're going to go ahead and clean those threads out. I'm going to use just a little cup of water and I'm going to splash it in there to rinse those beads off those threads. So before we put the cap and the tube and the filter back into the uh, water softener and put the cap on top of here, I want to make sure that I rinse these threads off. And also you see that residue right there by that O-ring. You see how dirty that is? So what we're going to do first is we're going to spray and clean those threads one more time. And then we're going to take this cap. This is really important. Sometimes those beads, you get a couple fine little beads right around that O-ring. And when you put the cap on, it will leak. So you really want to make sure that this cap is clean. So we're going to go ahead and clean that cap. And that looks good. We're going to set the cap over here. And I'm going to wipe that O-ring and this plastic um, cavity right here or jacket or whatever the heck you call it. We're going to clean that all up, get that all nice and clean, and we're going to spray it one more time all the way around. Nice and clean. Threads are clean. It's ready to go back in the softener. So we're going to take this top piece in the tube 
and we're going to go down inside and we're just going to push you see that you just push it down and it'll work its way down through those beads and then you take your hand and you just keep turning and we want to make sure that that o-ring that was underneath there it seats okay you don't have to get on this thing with pliers or a pipe wrench or anything like that you do not want to do that but you can just grab the top grab these fittings and get it as tight and again if you have a hard grip or arthritis or whatever you can take these pliers on this plastic rim right here and just gently watch how i do this just gently give it a little snug that's it okay so now we have the new resin beads our top has been flushed and washed and the threads and the o-ring has been cleaned and now we're ready to button this thing back up we're going to finish by putting on the cap and just again just snug and when you put in new resin beads you do not need to add any salt for your first time that you use this when you add new resin beads you do not need to use salt what we're going to do is we're going to take it over and hook it up to water and we're going to do a slow rinse because what's going to happen is is that those beads are new and with a slow rinse we're just going to kind of wash those beads okay they're going to be a little the water that's going to stream out of here is going to be a little yellowish but we're only going to do a slow rinse for a few minutes until that yellowish look has gone away then we're going to test the water so let's go over to uh, the wet bay where I hooked this softener up and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I have the water softener over here by in the back of the motorhome by our wet bay where I always keep it. And I'm gonna take my hose that comes from the city water, goes through my three filters. And now I'm gonna connect that hose to my inlet of my water softener. This is where it'll come out and go into the coach so let's turn on the water and remember it's going to have to fill up this container with the new resin beads so i have it kind of high right now i'm letting it fill up and as soon as it starts coming out i'm going to back the pressure off to a small little stream okay you see that we're, that's too much we're going to back it off so this is about the pressure of the stream that we want right here okay so this has been rinsing for about five minutes and we're just going to go ahead and take a cup my Joni's favorite wine cup and fill it with some water directly out of the softener and then we're going to take a test strip you see that right there and we're going to put it in for one second and let's look at what we have we're right about 1.5 25 right in that range right there kind of in between these two right here the water is nice and clear so as I said over there when you put in new resin beads you do not need to add any salt but as you use your softener over the days and weeks to come you continue to test your water with this with the uh, strips and when you see that you need to regenerate again then you go back to using your two containers of salt do your slow rinse for 25 minutes and your fast rinse for five minutes you just continue back to your same routine that you've always done having triple filtered softened water man it is a good combination and the last point i want to make is make sure that your water softener is the last thing your water goes through before it enters the coach or goes into your fresh water tank it's the last thing in the whole chain of command okay now, if this interests you and you'd like to have something this efficient, this easy to hook up, I'm going to put a link in the description text where my whole setup is there, where you can get these filters, your custom made hoses, uh, the softener, your new beads, whatever it is you need. I'm going to put a link there that'll take you to where you can get all this stuff. And, and I also give you the part numbers and everything. Uh, it, it, I've made it really easy for you guys to get this stuff. Just put it in the cart and check out. And if it's over 75 bucks, you get free shipping too. Now for these quick disconnects, my brass quick disconnects. I mean, I just can't, I mean, I just really brag on these things because these quick uh, disconnects that I have here are over four years old and they're still using the original washers. Uh, these things do not leak. They're easy, super easy to hook up. 
And I'm going to put a link also to our Amazon store where you can find these too. Now I'd like to just say a little something about using our links in Amazon store. The goal of RV Street, our channel, is to empower RVers to be able to feel confident and know how to do these DIY jobs yourself. I mean, there is no reason that we have to go through the school of hard knocks and spend a ton of money when I can show you exactly how to do these things, where to get the right equipment, and, and you can do this yourself. You can do this. So using our links and our Amazon store to buy, well, everything that you need is a great way to say thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joni, for taking the time to show how to take care of our RV. So in my opinion, that's really what it's all about, is helping everybody. And if you use our Amazon store and links, you help us and say thank you. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. If you guys like this kind of stuff, fixing stuff, upgrading stuff, learning how to maintain your RV and all that, you need to subscribe. You need to hit that red button and ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time we upload our next video. I mean, these videos are really going to help you. So that pretty well wraps it up, guys. This is the conclusion of how to replace your resin beads in your RV portable water softener. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.